morning friends today we are uh, starting a new lesson namely modeling and performance of transmission lines uh, myself uh, dinesh k assistant professor electrical and electronics engineering uh, before moving to this topic uh, i just produced uh, the portions covered to be in this session otherwise uh, these are all my lecture objectives for the entire session first i have to classify the overhead transmission lines what are the classifications of overhead transmission lines available and what are the important terms required for the modeling and performance of transmission lines and the performance of single phase short transmission lines three phase short transmission line and this performance is basically for a single phase and this performance is for a three phase next one is effect of load power factor on regulation and efficiency of medium transmission lines uh, in medium transmission lines we have three classifications same the condenser method nominal t method nominal pi method long transmission lines so in the long long transmission lines uh, we have to analyze the transmission line using your regress method And next one is generalized circuit constants of the transmission line. What are the generalized constants available uh, for the circuit uh, constants? That is your transmission line circuit constants. And determination of uh, generalized constant constants for transmission lines. So for the entire case of the transmission lines, that is your nominal pi method, nominal t method. in the context of method and long line method short line method the following methods we are going to determine the generalized constants for the transmission lines so these are all the topics i'm going to cover in this session and it is set to be an objective of the entire session and first i move on to the introduction portion so in the introduction portion the important consideration design and operation of transmission line and the determination of voltage drop line losses and efficiency of the transmission so these are all the three main objectives while we design our transmission lines uh, so the voltage drop drop so we have to minimize our voltage drop as much as possible and minimize our line losses as much as possible and the efficiency of transmission we have to improve the efficiency of transmission as much as possible and uh, these are all the important considerations of your uh, design and operation of the transmission line so for these three considerations that is voltage drop line losses and efficiency of transmission so these three values decides this considerations that is these values are greatly influenced by line constants resistance inductance and capacitance of the transmission line so these values plays a vital role when while you designing the design consideration for the transmission line so what happens if we design the values of r and l and c values properly firstly uh, we have an opportunity to understand the effects of the parameter of the line on bus voltages and flow of power we are easily determined or able to determine the bus voltages and flow of power effectively and secondly the help in developing and overall understanding what is occurring in electric power systems that is the current trend we may analyze with the help of the uh, modeling and performance of the transmission lines so these are all about your uh, introductions of your uh, modeling and performance of a uh, transmission line so next one is my classifications so based on the three constants we have that is r l c we have to distribute it uniformly along the whole length of the line so the values of r l c is invisible in nature but the character or the nature of the component uh, is available in the transmission lines that is your r l c is distributed uniformly along the whole length of the lines so here my resistance and inductance form the series impedance i may say has z so people uh, famously said to be z equal to r plus j x so your r stands for resistance 
and X L stands for your uh, reactants. So the combination of resistance and reactants is nothing but uh, your impedance. So the resistance and inductance competence, uh, that is your reactance due to the presence of inductant X L value. And in some cases, the capacitance existing between conductors for single phase line or from a conductor to neutral for a three phase line forms a shunt path throughout the entire length of the line. Yes, in some cases, that is your length of the line is more and more, we have the effect of capacitance in your line also. For the case of single phase, uh, we may have the capacitance effects. In three phase, uh, it forms the capacitance effects form between your uh, uh, line conductor to neutral conductor. So, in the parallel branch, we have the effect of capacitance. So, your capacitance uh, effects introduce complications in the transmitter line calculations. So, depending upon the capacitance calculations, uh, we have three types of line classifications are available. And number one is short transmission line, and second one is medium transmission line, and third one is long transmission line. So, we are going to discuss the short transmission line analysis and medium transmission line analysis, long transmission analysis in detail demand. So far we have classifications of transmission, overhead transmission lines, three category. One is your short line transmission, medium line transmission, and long line transmission. We are going to discuss one by one in detail. So yes, first one is my short transmission line. So, when the length of an overhead line is up to about 50 km, that is the range of 0 to 50 km is considered to be a short transmission line and voltage range should be less than 20 kV. So, it is usually considered as a short transmission line. So, we have to remember in our mind, so the length of the transmission line is uh, 50 within 50 km and voltage range is less than 20 kV. So, this quantities of this consideration is usually said to be a short transmission line. So, due to the smaller length, that is your length of the transmission line is only 50 km, within 50 kilometers, and lower voltage, that is less than 20 kV. So, the capacitance effects are uh, very small in this kind of uh, transmission line. So, we may neglect our capacitance effect. So, therefore, while studying the performance of the transmission line, only resistance and inductance of the lines are taken into account. This is only applicable for your short transmission line, not for your medium line as well as long line. So, we have to remember the operating voltage for the short transmission line is less than 20 kV and the distance carried out is uh, less than 50 kilometers. So, here we have to neglect our capacitance. So, next one is my medium transmission line. So, here my length of an overhead transmission line is about 50 to 150 kilometer. So, the range of the kilometer distance is given that is 50 to 150 kilometer and line voltage in this system is moderately high. So, the line voltage obviously 20 kilo volt uh, that is greater than 20 kilo volt and less than 100 kV. So, this kind, kind of uh, specification is said to be a medium transmission line. So, here we have a sufficient length and sufficient voltage. So, obviously, we have the effect of capacitance also. So, we have to take an account of the capacitance for the mathematical calculations or analysis purposes. Uh, so, here for the purpose of calculation, the distributed capacitance of the line is divided and lumped in the form of condensers. So, most of the times, the capacitance values are treated as condensers only. So, it is available one or more points. This capacitance of the line is divided and lumped in the form of condensers hunted across the line at one or four points. Yes, next classification is a long transmission line. So, here my length of the overhead transmission line is more, more and more, much more. Uh, we have uh, more than 150 km. Line voltage is very high, it is also greater than 100 kV. So, this kind of concentration is said to be a long transmission line. So, for the treatment of such a line, the line constants considered uniformly distributed over the whole length of the line, a rigorous method employed for the solution. So, we are not solving our solution in an easier manner or in a phasor manner, just like your short line or medium line. So, we have to perform the rigorous methods. We have some sort of differential equations 
to solve this kind of long line transmission uh, networks. So we may discuss in the derivation portion for the long line transmission lines. So we have to remember the operating voltage for the long line transmission is more than 100 kV and distance is more than 150 km. I go on to the next slide. Yes. Uh, the important terms available in the modeling and performance of the transmission lines. It is one of the uh, much essential terms needed for the entire uh, topic. That is, number one is voltage regulation. So, how much of voltage is regulated in the transmission lines is an important consideration. Next one is my transmission efficiency. So, these two things are my problem definition. So, a design engineer or transmission line engineer how to design the voltage regulation and transmission efficiency properly, then only a consumer receives his power as easy as possible, as economic as possible. In this manner, they are uh, getting the feasible electrical power using these two terms. That is, the consumer can easily adopt uh, the voltage regulation in an effective way and transmission efficiency in an effective way. These two are uh, very important terms that is applicable for the industrial customers as well as domestic customers. Yes, my first I have to express my percentage regulation. So the difference of voltage at the receiving end of the trans transmission line between the conditions of no load and full load. So the difference of the difference between your no load and full load conditions is said to be an voltage regulation. With respect to your sending and voltage, yes, the sending and voltage to receiving and voltage difference is nothing but your percentage voltage regulation it is usually expressed in percentage. So, only the formula is indicated as percentage regulation equal to Vs minus Vr by Vs into red. So, what is one of the important uh, definition uh, available for the power system modeling and performance? So, next definition is my transmission efficiency, the ratio of receiving end power to the sending end power of the transmission line is known as transmission efficiency of the line. So, the percentage uh, transmission efficiency in simple ways it is given by eta suffix capital T. So, nothing but receiving end power by sending end power into red. So, this is my two important terms available in the power system modeling and performance. So, next one is uh, the performance of a single phase short transmission line. So, here I am having my power circuit. So, in this power circuit, a simple model is given. So, here uh, I am having my series resistance, series reactance, XL, series resistance I am naming as R, and series reactance I am naming as XL. So, in between your R, XL, I may connect my load is also in series. So, in the entire length of the line, I may connect my R, XL, and load in series. And this is my Vs is nothing but sending end uh, voltage. My current I is circulating through the entire line. So, in the load terminal, that is across your load terminal, we may get our receiving end voltage. So, this particular condition is adopted for your short transmission line. So, the effect of capacitance is absent because due to its short length. So, the terms used in the circuit is I is my load current. R is my loop resistance, that is resistance of both conductors, and XL is loop reactance. VR is receiving in voltage, cast by R is receiving in power factor. Usually, it is preferred as uh, lagging power factor conditions, and V is sending in voltage, and cast by R is sending in power factors. So, these are all the terms available or related relevant to the circuit. Yes, next I am construct my phase R representation uh, for the circuit diagram. Yes. So, in this uh, phase R representation, uh, my current I is taken as a reference phase R. What is your current? Here, the line uh, O to D is my reference line. So, the current line is the horizontal line located here. That is O, E, D line is nothing but your current line. So, I am taking this current line as a reference. So, next uh, construction is my OA. So, the OA line. So, OA line represents your receiving end voltage Vs. So, this Vs in 
leading your current by an angle phi r. So the supply voltage at the receiving end side is leads by an angle phi r with your current capital I. So this is my second step. So first step I am taking my current as reference and second step my OA is my receiving end voltage. It is leads with your current by your phase angle phi r. So the next step your AB represents drops IR in the drop in IR. So it is in phase with your current. That is this line. So the line AB is nothing but you are receiving in resistance drop. So I into R. So it is your permissible resistance drop in the receiving end side. So this AB is in phase with your reference current I. So next one is my BC. So BC is my inductive voltage drop. I am naming the inductive drop as I times of XL. So this I times of XL leads your current. That is this current is 180 degree. So this current from the point B it leads by 90 degree. So next one is my initial con considerations are R or O and first one is my OI is reference, OA is my receiving end voltage and receiving side drop is AB that is due to resistance and receiving end drop in terms of inductance is I times of XL. At last my motive is I have to find out the sending end voltage OC. So when I am joining the line O and C I may get my VS line. Otherwise we may say your VS equal to VR plus IR plus IXL. Otherwise it is simplified as VR plus I times of so this is the simple phase of construction adopted for the short transmission line. So next one is uh, the governing equations available with respect to your phase of diagram. So here I need my OC. OC is nothing but this line. So I need this line OC. So OC square equal to OD square plus uh, CD square or DC square. From this right angle to triangle, I am going to calculate what are the numerical values belongs to the circuit. So the OD square, OC square equal to that is my VS square equal to OD square plus DC square. So OC is nothing but your VS, VS square, OD. So the line OD is nothing but uh, OE plus ED. So OE square plus ED square is nothing but OD square. I am written here. Next one is my DC. So DC is nothing but a DB plus BC the whole square. So uh, here I am written. That is OE plus ED the whole square plus DB plus BC the whole square. So this is nothing but my VR square. So I am substituting the exact values for the OE, ED, DB and BC. So first I need to determine what is my OE. So the OE line is located here. So in this line we have our uh, receiving end voltage in phase with your current with your cosine of the angle. So only I am substituting VR cos by R. And ED, ED is nothing but your drop due to the resistor, that is your AB line it is exactly in phase with your current ED. So here the same value, IR value existing in ED also. So the value is IR the whole square, that is VR cos by R plus IR the whole square. Next one is my DB. So DB is located in this place. So DB is here the same receiving and supply here with respect to the cosine, sorry sine. So dB is with respect to uh, sine and OE is with respect to cosine. So I am substituted here that is VR sine phi R and VC is nothing but drop due to the inductive reactance. This one I times of XL VC. So I am substituted here. So at last I may get my VS which is equal to square root of VR cos phi R plus IR the whole square plus VR sine phi R I XL the whole square. So the first uh, parameter for the short transmission line is pulse and daily voltage regulation. It is the difference of your sending in voltage to receiving in voltage by receiving in voltage into hundred. Next one is I may easily determine my sending in power factor cos by S. So cos by S is nothing but OD by OC. So OD by OC is nothing but my uh, sending in power factor that I have to determine. Next one is my power delivered. Power delivered here is VR, IR, cos by R. Line losses in the entire short transmission line is I squared R. 
power sent out is Vr ir cos by r plus my drop line losses i square not losses. At last, my percentage transmission efficiency is power delivered by power sent out into contract. So mathematically, I may express power delivered as Vr ir cos by r divided by Vr ir cos by r plus ir square into contract. Using this expression for the short transmission line, you may get your percentage transmission efficiency, power sent out, line losses, power delivered. So these are all the important uh, uh, formulas available to solve your short transmission lines. You may directly take in an account for solving your numerical examples. Yes, the next one is an approximate expression uh, for finding your sending and voltage. Uh, this is an approximate expression. An approximate expression for the sending and voltage V is can be obtained at as follows. Here, I have to draw a perpendicular line VC here. The same phase or what I am having in the previous is I have to draw a perpendicular line VC on OA. So, in this line, I draw a perpendicular line produced as shown in figure. The OC value, the OC value is nearly, I have extended my OC line to OF line. So this line I am equating the entire uh, O to C line to O to F line. So when I am extended this kind of uh, considerations, my phase R should be modified. Here my VR is my reference and phi R is uh, lags by phi R degree and my drop is IR and reactance drop is I in the XL. When I am adding these three values VR, IR, IXL, I may get PS. Here my current is lagging. So from this, I am getting my OC is nothing but OF, that is OF is nothing but OA plus AF, OA plus AF, AF is nothing but AG plus GF. So further I am going to simplify as OA, AG as it is, GF is also equal to the extension of the line PH. So this value this value is at most equal, so I am equating Gf equal to Bh. Uh, so the sending end uh, voltage for the phase R diagram is Vr, Ir cos by R, and I Xl sin phi R. So next one is my solution in the complex notation. So what is the need for the complex notation is it is uh, often convenient and profitable to make the line calculation in the complex notation. So here I have to chosen my VR as my reference phase R, that is this phase R diagram. Here I have to choose for a complex analysis this phase R diagram, my VR as my reference phase R. And in order to your uh, phase R diagram, the VS is nothing but the phase R sum of your VR vector and the I Z. So this the VS is nothing but phase R sum of VR vector and the I Z. So this drop due to resistance and reactance. So Vr is assumed as Vr plus J0 in terms of complex quantity and I vector, the current flowing through the entire circuit is mark I vector and angle minus phi r. Because why I am using the minus sign means because your current is lagging here. So the current lags your Vr with an angle phase r phi r. So only I am indicating here the negative sign for this angle of phi r. So the phi r is modified as i times of cos phi r minus j sin phi r and your z is nothing but r plus j xl v is equal to v r i into z. So I know the value for v r vector, v r plus j0 and i value i is nothing but i cos phi r minus j sin phi r that is nothing but r plus j xl. So when I am simplifying these values I may get v r plus i r cos phi r plus i xl sin phi r plus j i xl cos phi r minus i r sin phi r. This is my sending and that is my V S in terms of V S is uh, whole square root of V R plus I R cos square I Xl sin phi R the whole square plus I Xl cos phi R minus I R sin phi R the whole square. The second term under the root is quite small. That is this term I Xl cos phi R I R sin phi R is quite small and can be neglected with the reasonable accuracy. Therefore, an approximate expression for the Vs becomes Vs equal to Vr plus Ir cos phi r, I Xl sin phi r. So, this expression is approximately similar as we find out in the earlier 
uh, case, that is your actual calculations. That's so complex calculation as well as your regular calculations yeah, uh, receives the same answers of what is. Yes, two important note how to be taken for this uh, relation. Now the approximate formula V is equal to Vr IR cos by R plus I Excel sin by R. Use fairly correct results for the lagging power factors. However, in some cases you may get appreciable error is caused by reading power factors. Therefore, approximate expression for V should be used for lagging power factor. So short transmission line prefers always a lagging power factor and conditions only. So in this method, your solution is most complex, available in the complex notation and uh, is not the more presentable form. Yes, next one is my three phase lines. So the three phase short pressure lines, I am connected my three wire. So in terms of sending and receiving ends, I am forming a star for the uh, sending end supply. So three coils, I am having three loads, I am having between we have the transmitter line, constants RHXL, RXL and RXL. So I will just approximate the three phases into a lumped form. So whatever uh, we have in this star connection is in the distributed form. So I have to conveniently modify this circuit in the lumped form. That is I times R XL and connected by load in between your line and neutral. So we may get our phase values. So my sending inside and the receiving inside, my circuit becomes more, more and more simple here. So the effect of load power factor on regulation and efficiency. So regulation is changed now. For the case of single phase line, the voltage regulation is Vs minus Vr by Vs into 100. But in the case of three phase line, the voltage regulation is purely applicable for your lagging power factor as well as leading power factor. So here the percentage regulation for the lagging power factor is Ir cos by R plus I Xl sin by R by Vr into 100 for lagging power factor conditions. Next one is the percentage voltage regulation which is equal to Ir cos by R minus I Xl sin by R by Vs into 100 for leading power factor. So this kind of effect is takes place for your three phase lines. So based on that uh, two expressions, we have four conclusions. So when the load power factor is lagging or unity or such, leading that IR cos by R is greater than IR I XL sin by R, then voltage regulation is positive. That is receiving in voltage VR will be less than the sending in voltage values. Yes, in most of the cases, these things should be happening. In the receiving end set, we are not getting the actual voltage as we are sending in the sending end side. So the voltage is dropped due to this reason only. So the power factor is lagging or unity or such leading the IR cos by R is greater than I excess sin by R, then voltage regulation is positive. Then the receiving end VR will be less than the sending end voltage. Yes. Next one is for the given uh, receiving voltage and current, the voltage regulation of the line increases with the decreases of the power factor for lagging loads. And third conclusion obtained from the expression is the load power factor is leading to this extent. That is, I XL sin phi R is greater than I R cos phi R. Then voltage regulation is negative. The receiving end voltage V R is more than the sending end voltage V S. So it is very extreme cases. So this effect is also said to be a Ferranti effect. And next to the fourth conclusion is for a given V R under I, that is, your receiving end voltage and current, the voltage regulation of the line decreases. The decrease in power factor for leading loads. Next one is effect on transmission efficiency. So the transmission efficiency effect for the three phase transmission line is the P which is equal to VRI cos by R for single phase line. Uh, so from this expression I may get my current. Current is nothing but P divided by VR cos by R. Similarly for uh, power for a three phase line that is P equal to three times of VRI cos by R. Similarly current IE which is equal to P by 3 into VR cos by R. So these are all the effect caused due to the three phase transmission line. So exactly similar, the rest of the uh, values that is Vs vector, Vr vector, I vector, all the values are uh, same except the power and the current expression and your uh, regulation. So re regulation is applicable for your uh, leading case as well as allowing this. We may continue in the next session. Thank you.